Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the All Stats No Res podcast. This week, I am one of your co-hosts, HP Mudgecraft. I am joined by co-hosts Rob C.A. and Soran, and possibly, but not definitely, the son of Ghost of Voiced of Frigidin. And today's topic is a very dear one to our hearts. Instead of introducing it normally, I want to paint a picture. You're sitting there, running your little kingdom in Dominions 5. You've got all your little provinces and all your little mages are sight searching. And all of a sudden, you open up a turn and you see about 500 battles on your land. And then you oh my open God, up, HP, they're everywhere. Open up those battles, and you see all these little copies of little pony men uh, running around, taking all your provinces. You go to the main map, and your land is covered in enemy flags. You, oh my God, have, they're in the trees. So they're in the trees, <laughs> HP. You've just Mario been elfed, it. and that is the topic of our podcast today, the elfing. Oh my god, they're flying out of the clouds. <laughs> Why do I keep on hearing Mario coin noises? Ah, yeah. Ding, 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 ding. Yes, why not talk about elves for the after Christmas episode? It'll be after New Year's by the time you hear this, folks, but that's okay. I'm getting drunk as well. I would say stealth, cloud trapeze, and glamour is how Santa delivers all of his gifts around the world every year. <laughs> Uh, uh, yes, the gift of no fucking land for you. All right. So we should probably extend that elfing can extend to not just quote unquote elf nations, but anyone who has stealth. Yes. Uh, so, so when we say it's elfing, that does include all stealth nations in the game, or all stealth troops, or people who have access to these tools. Technically, That's right. any. You heard it. Any nation with a death in a scout can do it. You you heard it here first. Man, elves. Early age <laughs> home, elves. That's right. They're all Shinny elves. Yama. Shitty Yama? Elves. Damn right they're elves. Pangea? <laughs> certainly elves. All these motherfuckers, elves. Kill on sight. <laughs> no. Overgeneralizing groups into what they are. Elves. All right. So, so let's. Yeah, let's start by defining what being elfed is. In Dominions 5, generally speaking, elf is a, a kind of a fan-made um, like category not defined by Illwinter that generally refers to uh, things that have stealth, gl glamour, and semi-elite stats, typically stealth of 60 or above, and so when you have these elves that are all stealthy, you then have the elfing. And what the elfing refers to is generally an alpha strike where somebody stealths all their shit into your land and they attack all your provinces on one turn and they take them all. And this is a process known as being elfed. And the reason why it's significant is because uh, typically when people get elf, they just kind of uh the, the first reaction of most noobs is to just shut down and like uh get on the forums and and complain about it and and like assume you've lost the game because you've just lost all your land but uh it doesn't have to be that way there there is another way and we're here to guide you through that yeah i mean like actually uh counterating the guy yeah. you're fighting like a normal player and oh you took my land all right let's fight about it so do you want to yes. uh, do you want to start with uh, how to stop yourself from being elved, or what to do once you've been elfed? So we could talk about like the mechanisms. Like you can patrol and catch people. Technically, yeah. granted, elves have very high stealth values, so that's not the most consistent. You can technically magic phase if you know which province they're on. So that's your mind hunt, and I think seeking arrow can hit, but that's not consistent. Don't do that. Don't be one of those people. Um, <laughs> mind hunt works and i think technically so, you can hit people with falling fire but don't do that don't, don't <laughs> yeah. do that either. do it it's Ma funny. mostly it's just <laughs> minor. It's funny. you can't no, no. Uh, so let's talk about uh how, how to how to stop let's rewind and talk about how to stop yourself from being elfed because being elfed is not just some actual inherent property 
of elf nations that they just get to do to you and you have no counterplay it's it's a tactic and y- you can deploy counter tactics against it so Sauron, you mentioned like patrolling and that's one of them yeah. while elves have typically very high stealth values like 65 plus that only means you need 65 patrol value to patrol them out so if you are patrolling heavily on blood provinces or you're using watchers or things of that nature or you just pause your army and patrol because you're at peace and why not um and you catch you know you can catch elves and this is typically typically people don't think about the other side of the the occasion getting caught by a patroller is absolutely fucking disastrous for the elf player because it gives the entire game away right like yeah you basically put a big red flag to that player saying i'm about ready to steal all your coins you better <laughs> right. have a countermeasure and a lot of the time when people initiate that that handshake of i'm gonna do this it's the earnest is on you as the defender or the other player to react to this now granted no one expects to like you to pre- perfectly predict where people are going to attack right and being predictable you know this this is the game of dominion it's trying to figure out how that other player is going to attack you and which provinces he's going to pick is he going to pick the best ones is he going to try to connect his income is he going to pick the most stupid ones and drive you insane you know these are all parts <laughs> about the, the uh, game dude, that roll you dice. as the player <laughs> he, you know, you're just going to roll dice like lola yeah <laughs> like... contrary to popular belief you can attack people's provinces not trace the income <laughs> and drive them insane this is a real strategy <laughs> And listen, if they don't get those provinces, that's money they're not getting until they take it back. So, so there is value but, in sometimes but, nonsensical we're, plays. Well, we're, can we go over really briefly why patrolling out is so catastrophic for the player who is elfing? Absolutely. Yeah, go it's for it. Because man. if they happen to have, like, say they're moving through a choke point province, a fort that they need to get through in order to reach most of the lands they want to stealth attack. Uh, if they have four or five parties on that province in one turn for whatever reason and they all get patrolled out, they don't fight together, which, yes. you know, maybe they could potentially win. They fight separately against full health PD in every single battle, right. each one commander at a time. Yeah, each yeah, stealth commander will trigger a different battle, with a separate battle when patrolled out. So... That, yes, if you are moving your elves on moth or a territory, or if you're the defender, if you have a choke point and you're like, okay, to get to these other provinces, they'd have to stealth through this province, and you start patrolling it with like a hundred plus patrol strength, that's two watchers, folks. Uh, yeah, you could, you could do that, and that is absolutely catastrophic also if you just suspect like an elf player there's an elf next to you they haven't done anything said anything in a while you've scouted their borders which is very important and you see nothing uh so they might be attack like attacking you or, or stealthing into your lands just patrol with a lot of patrol strength on those forts and if you catch out an invading army that is in any way complex that has multiple mages that are going to like ca- be casting spells to beat your army you'll just catch them one at a time and then swat them down like bugs this is more of a conversation i'd argue about like so the big thing about being next to a glamour nation or a nation you can't really see the scanning reports you, you could technically extend this to end but we're not really going to because end has other issues that are not necessarily uh the same but uh Scouting on an elf player and understanding if they're fighting or if they're not fighting is super important because you you don't know what they're doing on the strategic map even if you had scouts. So you need to you know pay attention to one if you're next to them. And this can apply to other stealth nations like Pangaea who moves in stealth a lot. Uh, so you know they're in that same category of like you need to be a little bit cognizant of this nation if you're next to it to make sure you don't run into the scenario where you're out of position for a number of turns and it, it will take you four to five turns, even even two, uh, to take back that land if it, for some reason, got attacked. So it's important to, like, set up your your land in a manner where you can react if something happens. Like, if you have a fort that is a hub predicting provinces, that could be, like, a good strategy. 
But obviously, if that fort hub you have gets attacked, well, then you can't react and protect the other provinces. So th there's there's some nuance to this, but you just need to be cognizant of what's going on in your game and not freak out if, you know, you blunder and you get elfed. It, granted, it's not necessarily a blunder if you get elfed. Sometimes people yeah, are just yeah. elfed. So uh, the other thing about patrolling and looking at the strat map is if you correctly predict an elf thing, or as is many the case, someone has a nap with you, and good lord, the nap, <laughs> this is another reason not to take naps, but someone has a nap with you, and they say, their glamour nation says, all right, in three turns it's on, we're, we're going. That's the huge telegraph. That's the biggest telegraph there is, even more than catching people in your land. So if you catch them in your land, or if they like cancel their nap, you have three turns of prep to stop yourself from being elf. And uh, I know I bring this up every fucking episode, but let's talk about the most successful anti-elf encounter of all time. Uh, Arco completely just destroying... Who was it that was out trying Chris to Lighthawk. Elf him? What? Chris Lighthawk. Chris Lighthawk. Uh, Chris Lighthawk's attempted elfing because Chris Lighthawk told him they had a nap. He said, three turns, I'm attacking you. And then three turns later, he attempted to elf Arco. And Arco had cubes and tramplers and swallowers in every fucking province and just destroyed him. Yeah. If you're an elf nation, it might be in your benefit, unironically, to break your naps. Because <laughs> cause telling someone, hey, I'm going to, I'm an elf nation, you know I'm an elf nation, and I'm going right. to pop out in all your provinces. You know, some people think, like, they take the moral route here, but honestly, you should have met a game with nap breaking. <laughs> Why well, you sign naps with elves in the first place? But, but very, very well. You sign naps with elves so they can fucking so they can fucking grief themselves by telegraphing their attacks. So, yeah, if you're an to, elf falling through to, the like, this, this is another component of thinking like the opponent. When typically an elfing revolves around a bunch of small squads of elites taking a bunch of provinces at once. Now this is a very big gold investment across very few models. So it typically gets absolutely griefed by things like cubes, but even things like, oh yeah, air elementals or earth elementals, just deploying them to your land can destroy raider squads. You don't have to have your guys out on your land for that long if you expect you're getting elfed for them to get value. And then you could just bring them back to your forts and resume research. So well, it depends yeah. on the the player you're playing. I'd, with. I'd also like to dig a little bit deeper into the example as well, because basically what ended up happening is by saying, "I'm ending the nap in three turns." Not only did Chris Lighthawk forewarn Arco of the advance, because he was playing Vanheim in the Middle Age, Arco had another level of intel advantage because Elfing has been around for many years now. And it's kind of an understood strategy. They are going to try and use stealth and magic phase movement to control as many of my provinces as possible. Right? Right. So Arco set up his defense for the expectation of what he would be fighting without actually knowing what Chris Lighthawk would commit to any particular province. And his expectations were exactly spot on in what he needed to do to defend all of those provinces. Yes. In a way, Chris Lighthawk playing as meta as possible fed directly into what Arco needed to do to defend. Because if Chris Lighthawk had, say, doubled up what he was raiding with and only attacked half as many provinces, it's entirely possible that he would have won a lot of the battles he ended up losing. Right. Yeah. So, in, in a sense... Even though you're telling somebody you're going to attack them, the attacking player still does have some level of initiative. Yeah, they always have. Um, so that, that's a great point. You always have the initiative as the attacker because you choose the fights. But a lot of people view elfing as like either A, if they elf, they have to connect income, which makes you predictable. Or B, you, they're going to minimize the their attacks on air, 
to spread it across as much surface yeah, area gonna... as possible. A, Instead a, of like concentrating, a true, or... a true elfing is not just using elves; it's hitting every province at once. And once you are prepared for that, you can defend every province at once in a way that'll destroy it. So if you are, and I've done this before, if you are the stealth player, one thing that you can do at the outset of a war is just have a couple of stealthy raiding squads hit the provinces while you're preparing an elfing, see how your opponent reacts to that, and then if they're a potato elf, <laughs> and if they're prepared for you, then you switch up your strategy. <laughs> Yeah, I also so... think it can be even simpler than that. As an example, what did Chris Lighthawk do after his first turn of disastrous rating? Right? He starts getting creative. He asks himself, okay, I've seen what the opponent has. What do I need to do to counter it? And he starts changing up what he's bringing. He gets more creative with his resources. He doesn't just use stealth rating parties of thugs and sacreds. He starts bringing different magic setups into it and figuring out what he needs to do. You don't have to wait until your opponent counters you to do that. Right. You can if you're anticipate. using your scouting properly and the enemy is patrolling and you know that they are, you can figure out what they're using to patrol with ahead of time, potentially using mundane scouts, and then wait, could, build in creative counters for that. Couldn't he right. have won, by the way, versus the cubes if he just cast an elemental? Yes, the elementals... elementals... They, they counter cubes. Right? Generally speaking, yes, they counter cubes. That's yeah, yeah, not hundred percent, but yes, they will well, trample. I, the I cubes. know trample. the cubes will not trample them. Um, yeah, yeah, cubes do have a magic attack, but air elementals have high defense, so they're probably not going to get yeah. hit by it. But yeah, um, the so, cubes acid eight attack. Yeah, good, right. Good move. And then like, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I I do want to say for that for that elfing defense because we are focusing on elfing for that for that defensive elfing if you know and this is the last thing i'll say about it but if you know the turn your opponent is attacking you with that elfing what you can do you can prep and you just send your guys out from the fort on that turn uh, if you have if you have to move some people a turn in advance to get them to their positions um on the appropriate turn then do that but a lot of times you can just prep your counters in fort and then on the turn you expect to get elves, move them out and, um, you know, counter it. I think it's super hard for the defender. And again, it's all up to the, uh, the attacker. Like as a defender, like even if, let's say I tell you in three turns, I'm ending my nap. All I have to do is not attack on the turn our nap ends. Or I, I just right, I can get to see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or are you poke and prod? You don't have to commit all the way. You can commit mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. I, I always like try to get into a habit of testing the waters with my opponent. Like I yes. want to see how they one, you want to see how they react to what like a nap ending or when you attack them, what they do. Do they instantly respond? Do they you, do you show someone on the strategic map like an obvious move and do they react to it? Do they over invest speed you have to get some sort of read on that's, like your opponent's habits that's the thing be elfing somebody taking all the provinces at once it's a very arrogant tactic and it's a tactic that can set yourself up to get griefed which we've which we've seen it is very counterable it is a it is a disrespect you're di if you are elfing someone you do not respect them uh what? their their play style well, so yeah <laughs> i'm going to i'm going to disagree slightly with that all right sure. Sure. Oh, sorry. i will say if if to your overarching strategy for winning a war is an alpha strike where you take all of their land in the first turn and then you win Yes, that is an arrogant strategy. It is an arrogant line of thought. It's a poor strategy, and it's absolutely counterable. I will say, however, uh, many elf nations have some variety of um, remote attack or assassin that they can include in their strategy. Uh, just to give three examples, Pangaea is a primarily stealth nation in a couple of its ages, and it has dryads. TNN has any Ford Air Assassins, and Ubar has one of the most cancer assassins in the game, as well as stealth and glamour flying and things like that. All of these mean if somebody spreads out to counter you, you can counter their counter. True. As part of a integrated attacking strategy. And the other thing that Elfin can do, if you're more intentional with it and you're not 
trying to take control of as much land as possible as quickly as possible just for the sake of doing so is you can use it as a way to deny your opponent information on what your follow-up armies that are actually supposed to take their forts are doing. Yes, they might be able to see your army on the can on the strategic map, and sometimes they might not be able to. A lot of people don't put scouts in their own land, so they might not even necessarily know right. what is in your army from a scouting report if it's moving in after a stealth attack. Yes, it it is powerful to stealth attack a fort and then on the subsequent turn move the proper army, which you have not shown, <laughs> onto that same fort. Um, Presuming it's stealth. Yeah, I mean, right. that, that just comes into the more the stylistic nature of, like, if you're... How you set up your nation... Um, and, uh, again, if you set up your nation in a, a, a way where you can you can at least react in sections with, like, your fort placement. You should be able to see people's army, especially if you ping and stuff. Uh, if, if you're a player who doesn't ping a lot or know what I'm referring to, you just take a commander, you break siege, or you attack a province to see what's going on. It, you know, if it's 40 gold, if it's 25 gold, absolutely do it to see what someone's doing. You might not see someone's script, but you can generally infer. That there's ways you can see people's script or people will... Yeah. You know, they'll just show their script when they go on your fort, and right. you can just so, pop out and yeah. jump burn it or whatever. It, it, it. So there's there's one last thing I want to talk about preparation before we talk about reaction because I do want to get to that, but uh, sure. and that's just the general good practice of this doesn't this has less to do with like stopping an elfing, but the general good practice of just having troops and countermeasures generally on your forts or available in your labs uh, can help you either stop an elfing or react to it. So if you have water mages, just just have a couple of cubes in every fort. If you have, like, recruit troops so you have troops on hand so you don't have to scramble for what your mages can cast to generate their own chaff. You know, just, just general good practices of, okay, I want a little bit of troops, a little bit of uh, counter magical countermeasures, and a few mages in every fort so that each fort is that strong point that can strike out and, and defend your land at any given point in the game. It doesn't have to be a full army per fort, just a few things so that if the area around the fort falls under threat from who knows whatever you can actually you actually can react and defend your property reasonably yeah i mean th that's like the whole uh raid game i know I, at least i reference a lot in the podcast like the importance of it but that's why you should really learn it because it'll help you in these scenarios where you get elfed and now you're you're in a back and forth with a player who has stealthy it gives you more practice more better practice of, you know, oh, what can I mid... Like, how is the elf player going to... What, what is he going to do? Is he going to dump PD on all the promises he took? Or is he going to put a bunch of ones everywhere to see what you do? Right. So let's... I mean, there, there's all sorts of different plays like you can do as the attacker and the defender. But... So, so let's talk about what to do when you get elf. Because most people who play this game are not... Have been elfed before and expect to be elfed or will get elfed most like noobs don't know what to do when they get elved. Let's say you don't prevent the enemy from elfing you. You don't have countermeasures in place. You get you got fucking elved. Now the enemy has all your flags on ever all provinces that aren't forts and maybe some of the forts too. And uh all your land got taken and uh generally like I said earlier what people tend to do in this circumstance is give up, break down, cry uh, go on the forums and complain that elves are in the game, you know, post dwarf memes about how they hate elves, <laughs> like, and and fall apart. It's a common way for noobs to lose a game is they get elfed and fall apart. But we're here to tell you that there's there's another way. You you can actually you can actually fight back post elfing. You're not screwed. You're down one turn of income. How many turns have you had of income in the game? Probably 30-ish, you know? <laughs> like, Yeah, so... I will say one of the most important things, uh, in general for Dominions, but also particularly if you've just been alpha strength, 
via Elfinger flying or whatever, is mindset is important. Right? Absolutely. With experience, you can kind of realize that just because you've been Alpha Strike doesn't mean you're dead. Just because you've been Elf doesn't mean you're dead. Uh, but another thing is you should look at it as an opportunity to have fun in the game. That can be one of... <laughs> A war where you get brutally attacked the first turn and you have to scramble for a defense can be one of the most fun experiences in Dominions. And if you Assuming win... Assuming <laughs> you're not, like, out of resources immediately. Right. Yeah, mental is In super... which case... Yeah. And Sorry. if you win, it's a great story. You could be like, oh, I got elved and I was down to my last province and then I came back and, you know. Uh, my, first, <laughs> my first game of Dominions ever against Pangea is... Lanka, I played terribly. By the way, I got down. I got down to my my capital, and I beat the Pangea off like three times. And I went from one province at like turn thirty to like the second best power, which I should have never been allowed to do. Uh, <laughs> later in the game, I still would later lose to a, someone throne rushing in Cataclysm. For whatever reason, we had Cataclysm on. It was my first game in my defense, uh, but. You know, you can have some great stories where it's like, just keep on playing. The mental is really rough because you'll go from having, like, all these resources to now you don't have anything again. And that can happen. Yeah, and that happens in Dominions, and that's one of the good things. But having the mental, it can be rough. I highly recommend um, talking with other players, especially when you get down. This is a part of the game where it's going to happen. You go from this really cool position to now you're you're a little screwed here. You got to do something. You can't you have to react, so it's like, you know, talk talk with other players if you're unsure what to do. You know, talk with people like me. They probably have had the same experience, or maybe they'll give you insight on what you could do, or maybe what you could do better in the future. But, like, don't outright quit. Some people go AI after getting elf, which is always... Right. Terrible. It's very... Terrible. It's like... Like, there's going to be winners in the game, and there's going to be losers. You're playing an FFA game. You don't, you're not, you're not going to win every game can't be selfish right so you're gonna win the minority of your games even if you're a very good player generally speaking um if like, you're playing with other very good players yes right yeah. like like there's definitely something to be said about players who consistently get to the, the mid to late game but you know not all those players even if you consistently get to that point in the game win you know right some people claim to, but they also had, uh, they have some dubious history. It's like, well, who's in your game? And it's like, <laughs> oh, these are all players who have played one time and you've won but... consistently against a bunch of new players. And now you're telling us how good you are. It's like, oh, this might be a little bit of a so I guess the, the... disingenuous. Well, another thing you can do, not just talking to other players outside of the game, but, you know, a lot of people get freaked out, even if they're not the person who got elfed. They're like, oh my god, the elf player just took 15 provinces? Oh, we oh. gotta have some Diplo we gotta, uh, That's the Diplo. We gotta, we gotta get this guy. Di- so, hey, but, y- you know, fair is fair. They they elfed you, you Diplo dog them back. No, exactly. He's got a point. I, I feel say, like it's there's so a lot of people say, who are just waiting. This. Look at There's what a lot this. of people... <laughs> They're just waiting for the opportunity to get the dirty elf out of the game. Right. Okay? And people Where, I've said it. I've <laughs> said it. I'm not going to take it back. All those all those scrubs True. who have been elfed in the past and immediately went to AI. Yes, and as soon exactly. as you get elfed, they're, they're going to attack the elf. <laughs> everybody has been there, HP. Everybody has more sympathy for the person who's just been elfed than they do for the that, elf. That is yeah, true. By the way, that's like the biggest dirty diplo because like <laughs> it you is, rating. It is, it is the you... biggest dirty diplo, but you're gonna fucking do it. So, <laughs> for I reference, mean, you flagging true. a bunch of land doesn't necessarily mean you it's, get the money. You, you want... might get the money the, for one. Or two. The the absolute worst kind of diplo dog in the game is the person who. Sees somebody else get elfed, has a nap with the elf, and then they go and vulture the person who just got raided to death. I actually hate those players with a passion. <laughs> They're like, it's oh, like the, someone... elf, the elf player missed this fort. Guess I'll grab that one while I can. Yeah, like someone's aggressively getting raided, and then it's like, or, or you're, let's say, like, let's say I, say I aggressively get raided, and then my neighbor's like, huh, looks like you're dying better start eating you it's like bro i just haven't killed the raiders yet and that that shit is actually toxic so, 
I, I have opinions That's on that, but I'd like it. to I'd like to bring us back to the the counter yeah, elfing okay. just just to sum up what we said about mindset. Like the basic of it is is, is like the the very first thing is when you get elfed is you're it's gonna feel bad, but don't panic and don't give up immediately. And I want to go into a couple of other things that you can do that will help with your mindset, but are also countermeasures in their own right. So the first thing is thinking of what you actually have. And that's like, actually look at the map now that it exists after you've been elfed and look at your actual assets, which you're going to be more than that one turn of income you lost. They're going to be your assets you've built up across the game. Look at your mages, look at your troops, actually gauge what you can respond to this with. So they like know yourself so that you can, you can fight your way out. And the other thing after getting elfed is look at your opponent's options. Now, Sometimes being on the defense is very hard because the attacker has a lot of places they can go. But after you've been elfed, there's a limit to how much the other player can do at that point. They have very limited targets. They can either consolidate onto your forts. They can stealth out. They can consolidate onto a province hoping to catch counter raiders. They can PD dump some provinces, but not that many of them. So they actually, the elf player actually has very limited options after elfing you so when you look at that instead of being like oh they've taken everything that's a catastrophe and i need to have a defensive mindset be like okay what is this player now that they've taken all this land they they basically have like two or three options that they could do they can either they could either stealth out and see what i do in which case i get to counter rate and retake all my land if i think they're doing that they're going to consolidate on my forts and if you think Massive they're thorough. right, if they're if you think they're going to do that, then you get to have a fair fight with them on your forts. You get to beat them because you could throw all your gems in immediately, and then you can you can you could beat them in that fight, and then you could take your land back. Or you yeah. know they have this third option, which is they can consolidate on one of those other provinces and attempt to catch counter raiders. Sometimes they have more options than that, but those are the general three things they can do. If they do that third option, they'll probably get one of your counter rating squads for free, which feels bad, but you'll probably take the rest of the provinces. So based on what you think your opponent's going to do, they don't have that many choices, and you actually have some very effective countermeasures. The elf player is actually in kind of a pickle after elfing you, unless... They like unless you completely flop it. and give up on them. Now they actually have a harder strategic choice after elfing you than you have in uh, going after them. You can now seize the initiative as the attacker and decide what kind of response you want and how you want to counterattack them. And usually you can take most of your land back in the very next turn. Yeah, the, the elf player has a very like, I think the correct decision if you elf someone is to see how the player reacts. If you are absolutely arrogant and being disrespectful, you try to go <laughs> for that player's forts because, oh, I haven't taken those provinces yet. You know, right. the big ones, the forts. And then you blind run into whatever that player does. <laughs> right. That is exceptionally risky. And like, there's no reason, in my opinion, if you are the attacker and you have the onus, to blind run in, especially your stealth raiders, into an actual army. Right. And a lot of the people will make this mistake, so you can catch them out. Like it, it it is a game of cat and mouse to see, like, all right, here's my reaction. What are you gonna do? And you know, you most some of those players, like HP said, they don't they just fold. But really you have a lot of options and it's hard for the attacker. Yes. So unless like someone is absolutely disrespecting you, you know, they can throw pretty heavily. Uh, so you have you have a lot of uh, chances, and it really just depends on the one v one war or or the war in general. I feel like <laughs> playing with disrespect. <laughs> when to disrespect is always a hard call. Like sometimes it is the right call versus certain players, but this is very metagamey. But I generally don't recommend disrespecting people you haven't played against because you could get burned if that player is playing correctly. So 
A player disrespecting you. And to be to clarify, yeah. Sean is saying disrespecting their their play. I guess not disrespecting them as in. Yeah, no, uh, I'm not going into the game chat and being <laughs> like, "Lol, oh, you suck. look who right. just got elf this." You know, not that. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're... Not respecting their ability to counter raid or things we're, like that. What we're, yeah. what we're talking right. about disrespectful mm. plays. What we are talking about is taking risky plays that open you up to punishment on the assumption that your opponent's not going to do jack shit about it uh so that is the disrespectful play like yeah so basically in dominions when you att so when you're fighting someone I'm, I'm sure i'm just gonna frame this when you fight someone you are showing that player what you are doing and it it is then in your ballpark to react and see if you can counter what that person is doing and maybe you you don't know always if you can beat whatever they're doing but Doing something is, you know, what you can do. And if that player thinks that something you're doing is not going to beat what they're doing, it's being disrespectful because you're running what you've already shown into that player and you're expecting them not to counter the thing. So it's it's disrespecting. Yeah. This is in a large extent also like how information warfare works in Dominions. One player will move something and then the other player will see what they have and they can come up with a counter. And then maybe the person who moved first dodges that counter and then they can see what the other player is doing and they can come up with another counter for that and it can go back and forth like that. Yeah, and that's how the, the game of Dominions works. Is yes. <laughs> I, develop, I, I, I put my piece on the table and then you have the opportunity to put your piece. If you never put your piece on the table, I will keep on taking your, your resources. But if you put your piece down, my piece now, we go into a thing that does your piece beat mine. And, right. and then you I'm get being... to see the battle, get to see if it beats it or why, and then you both go back to the lab to cook up a new strategy. And that's the... Now, sometimes <laughs> this doesn't happen with the back and forth, and one player <laughs> puts their piece on, and their piece keeps on beating <laughs> so... with... The other player or their piece never shows up and you're like, what the fuck? I thought we were playing Dominion. <laughs> so, yeah, and, we're, we have been describing the basic core gameplay loop of Dominion's five battles. Uh, that's, but, that sometimes does not occur, but it which is very frustrating. doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> frustrating is that people sometimes don't Sometimes people just don't want to... A lot of people, I've, to... I've noticed, a lot of people play dominions but they don't really want to play dominions they want to play something else they just want it wrapped in a dominion skin and that's you know that's up to them what they enjoy but there is a basic core gameplay loop to the game and you do get rewarded for engaging in it imagine talking about high level to, play and not to bring it back to elves real quick right i just wanted to add one last thing to the first turn reaction uh, that i think is somewhat important which is don't be afraid, even if you, in theory, have the time to do your turn in the allotted time. Don't be afraid to extend it to give yourself more time to think about yeah, it. Yeah, be like, hey, I, I just got elfed. Some of I need the an hardest, extension. <laughs> like... Yeah, exactly. The, the initial reaction is particularly going to be big on an elfing turn. And so you need some time. And this is true for both parties, even. The attacker has committed so many resources and so many attacks... But they have to go through them all. What worked? What didn't work? How do I, you know, change stuff going forward? How do I recover whatever resources might be stranded now? Both players are going to need some time to think over the turn. What do I have left after the turn? How do I use it? What strategy choices do I have to make? Don't be afraid to take extra time for that. Don't be afraid to take extra time if you feel you need it for diplomacy or things like that. Even if you're not getting people to beat up in a coalition whoever attack you like a diplo dog you know go to your other neighbors like hey i just got elfed i'm not dead yet don't come vulture me i still have a lot of resources in my forts this is what i think i can do uh yeah if you kind of try and come vulture me you know i still have enough left to defend myself you know even something like that if you need the time to go and reassure everybody that you're not dead can be right. helpful you need to make trades just so, make sure your core answer is never, I'm banking all my resources on my neighbor to save me from this yes, situation. That yeah. would be a bad response. That, that happens a lot. Do don't not bank on someone it. else. For that. I, don't give up either. I, I do want to say one more thing on the time thing. And, and like, 
this is we're we're extendo bastards here. Some people will hate us for this. This is another controversial take. But listen, if you get elfed and you are a player, you know you you tilt. You have an emotional reaction, and you're like, hey, I need twenty four hour extension so I can like drink a beer or two, like cry about it, and then like get over my tilt. And then actually get to play the game when I open the game up again. Then just do that. You can like take an extension for morale reasons, and most people, even people who really hate like when you extend the game, most people, if you say, "Hey, it's been a big turn. I've been elfed. I need to formulate a response," they'll be happy to let you extend that game. So if you're the kind of guy who like you're on tilt at first, even though you know that's irrational, yeah, take a day. Do something other than Dominions, play some other game, play, you know, play a boomer shooter, play something power fantasy that, like, play God of War, you know, uh, and then, like, come back to Dominions and they'd be like, all right, now I can be more rational. Then, yeah, take a, take a day for morale reasons. Why not? Like, you should absolutely, ex- like, extend when it's needed. Like, you're playing a game that lasts for months and you are spending a day, sometimes every day playing these turns like this is not a job you're playing for this is a hobby for free do not feel bad taking time especially if you're working which a lot of people are some of the people in the community do not work and they do not understand the concept of coming <laughs> home from fucking work and then having to do your tour it drives me up a wall that there are people in the community who fucking unironically get mad at people who work <laughs> like don't survive and they're like oh what you need more time you can't do your turn all right <laughs> Fuck those people. I hey, just give a little hint there for you guys. So to give, if, you if you didn't hear it. <laughs> so I do, oh. I, I do want to cover. Uh, I want to cover a couple more things. So one of them is that the ritual phase uh, responses to elfings because we have. Um, oh, right. So so we we didn't talk about that much. There's not all that many sometimes you can catch people with cloud trapezes if they're not stealthy or whatever if they did a different type of, type of alpha uh, strike if they do a poor elf move a stealth move away they can also get caught if they are uh, moving true. multiple provinces uh, too far yeah but yeah. but i want to specifically hold in on on mind hunt because mind hunt is one of the premier anti-elf tools in dominions five because i have have to do you you get in the magic phase all you have to do is you gotta you gotta nail someone and you kill them and then their fucking troops just pop out into the province confused (laughs) yeah there there are countermeasures to mine hunt but uh basically to so if you were the mine hunter or if you were the mine hunt access you were generally an astral nation with like and you have some level of high astral or you have Astral 2 with two boosters, and now you can mind hunt these commanders that are stealth bastards, and you can delete them. Now, uh, obviously, the elf player, if they want to counter this, they run around with scouts, but they're stealth artemies, and now you have like a 50 50 of hitting some bozo scout. Yeah, right. But you're spending two fucking astral pros on each mind hunt. It it's matter. three. It's, oh, it's, three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it is three or six. Let me double check. No, it's not six. No, no, it's it, Evo oh, six. It's I think it's two. It, yeah, it's oh, two. Yeah, it's cheap as chips. It's Evo bullshit. six. The the thing is, you do need to have Thom five to get the uh, Soul Slay effect. Which no, no, it's, right. That's oh, oh, yeah, you need Thom five. Yeah, and for Soul Slay, Thom two gives you Mind Burn, which is good enough in a lot of cases. But Thom five, you'd rather have Soul Slay. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a bit of an investment. I, I have mixed feelings on the spell because it. I know it promotes passive play, but it also gives you an answer to really annoying elfing. Uh, I feel like that's one of the faults of Dominions having yeah. <laughs> well, it's, a big, it, it's a big issue with the assassins and seducers when you have these fuckers who you can't interact with till after. <laughs> Mind Hunt is useful there. I will say though, that is true. corner case exception, there is one elf nation. I, I feel like has... patrols should just work. Well, like, like, Patrols should come though. before Assassin oh, before assassin. If it Maybe. came before assassin slash seduce patrol went first, I think no one would care about seducers, honestly. 
Or it would, it would, they would still care, but it would help. Yeah, so... I, no one's hurt. Hey, you know what? Strong just, defensively just, still, because you have to move patrol, move just, patrol. Like, just, that uh, would be just, just move assassinations to the fucking end of the turn order and make the assassin player actually have to predict people. Easy clap. Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> it takes a lot of the issues. I, I'm surprised no one's... I've, I don't think anyone's ever brought that up. Why don't they just move it down in the turn order? Why is it above movement, like or patrol? Like it's so dumb. A for assassinations. It... It's the top of the list. <laughs> well, no. we can was... theoretically make a thread that's if like it was, uh, if it was here? below movement. Then if somebody just kept moving, you would never be able. Oh, to oh, okay, not movement, but but patrol should definitely. Because uh, right? well, like, I, imagine I actually, you're trying to assassinate I, out a no, raiding no, party, no, and Rob, they just Rob, never stop moving. Rob, you put it. You put it below movement, right? And. You just have that, like, you have to predict it, right? You just have to predict no, it. No, that's not good enough, because nah, if yeah. they don't stop moving, then you can only use it on forts. Yeah, right? yeah. He, he's uh, right. Yeah, you like, have what to, if the you opponent just high. never stops moving? Well, right? you, I, every turn, you, they're either you, no, you make a, moving you make a, to, moving you make a, to raid, you make or they're hot, moving in their own land. You make the assassinate command not pop you up in your own you, you'd have to make it usable in your own land or like you'd have you to can make predict somebody moving in into land. the province and you're sitting uh, i think it would just be easier and then if they move in you can assassinate them I right guess. yeah okay yeah, that's I, I, I think all right it's, it's still be better now. as patrol so that <laughs> whatever right whatever aside from that tangent what i was trying to say is if you're going to mind hunt somebody who elfed you don't do it if you're facing middle-aged nabah because they have stealthy astral right Yes. Everybody else. There's, there's an exception to the rule, but versus like Pangea, you, you're, you're free to do this. Most stealth nations. Most, most, yeah, most stealth nations. Like, be careful who you do it to, but most stealth nations do not have uh, astral and therefore vulnerable to mind hunt. So it is a it is a countermeasure, and uh, this is what makes Sauron hate it. But mind hunt is there for when you are losing the raid game if you are not good at the raid game if you're getting raided you can delete people's leaders and then clean up the mess later you know like, listen <laughs> i feel like they should just have people not play like shit but that's my <laughs> don't, wor Sauron, don't worry soon you will be able to put stealth on all of your sacred astral i really want to know so so uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So on, on, oh, yeah. What a great change that's coming in six <laughs> from now. So on, okay, on, on. on that topic, one last thing I want to talk about, and this does deserve to be last, is the pseudo elfing. And this is when you get something that Shlola, I think, famously talked about for Moria, when you have someone who cloud trapezes on your province with a bunch of bullshit and has a few stealthy guys with it, and is like, whoa, look at me, I'm an elf! And then and then just fucking cloud traps for an alpha strike, or in some way attacks all your provinces with shit that is not... Uh, that outside of the magic phase is not high mobility or stealthy. This is a massively disrespectful move, and it generally shows that you're playing against a scrub who has just blown all their gems on temporary gains and has left a bunch of mages with their dicks hanging out of their britches ready for you to just, like, fucking lop them off. <laughs> like... <laughs> because a lot of elfings aren't real elfings. They're pseudo-elfings. And then you could just catch them and punish them if you don't have that tilt on you could just look at their options they have even less options than the elf does and you could just clap them like yeah i mean the reason why elfing is so annoying is because because they have stealth and you can't see them there's a lot of prediction going on so it's like it's a little bit hard like a step above the red game because you can't necessarily guarantee oh did that guy just stand in place in the province he raided? I don't fucking know, because I can't see his bastard units. <laughs> right! Granted, you can't see them if they're in stealth anyways, but you really can't see them at all. <laughs> Are they moving around or shit? Yeah. Did he move in another commander, or is that indie commander still? <laughs> uh, right. There, there's all sorts of stuff. I, I mean, uh, th there's a lot of like mistakes that can happen, so... A lot of there, there is a little bit of presumption that in this conversation we had that when someone's elfing, they 
They move from stealth, attack, and then they stealth again. Some people don't do that. They will stealth <laughs> attack you and attack again. And this is where you can catch them in magic phase or assassination phase, normal movement. Uh, so, you know, there, there, there's a lot going on in the whole raid game, but that's just the game of Dominions. Right. It's, it's yeah. this, what do you do? One thing that a stealth attack and elfing will usually do is take a game that wasn't as complicated the turn before uh, and make it much more complicated. <laughs> yeah. It is suddenly a more complicated game position, which is why it can be a lot of fun. There's a lot more decisions to make, a lot more to figure well, I mean, out. the whole point of playing Dominions, in my opinion, is to, you know, have they that have interesting, fun. that interesting, fun interaction with that player. It's like, oh, what's the war going to be like? Oh, what are you doing? What am I doing? I don't fucking even know what I'm doing. You yeah. walk around. The, the most fun war I've ever had in Dominion <laughs> was one I had relatively recently, where I opened up a turn and it was a two v one, and there was like two page, two entire pages of battles just between <laughs> me and the other two players, uh, and I had to figure out what to do <laughs> to counter <-rate> everything. <laughs> it sounds like the goofiest game. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. That was that one. Uh, oh I posted a video from later in that game. That's the only video I have, and that was a really fun game. But uh, <laughs> so, I would reason. say, and in so far as elfing from the perspective of the attacker goes, you know we've put a lot of things forward that maybe it's a large commitment of resources and it might not always pay out. I do want to bring up a situation where I think it is almost always the right thing to do. What? If you are, know you are significantly ahead of your opponent and you want to end a war as quickly as possible, in my opinion, the best way to do it is to get an information advantage over them before you go in and then alpha strike them. That's the quickest way to use a resource advantage to win a war, right? That is you true. Prevent it's them from stalling as much as possible when you do that. You can stop them from predicting exactly what your armies, which you know should have a resource advantage before going in. They can't predict what you're going to do and outplay you as easily. And so if you use these things correctly and you have a resource advantage, you can leverage it more quickly and more effectively if you do an alpha strike ahead of time. Yeah, I mean, alpha striking a smaller nation when you're a larger one, obviously, just being bigger alone is an advantage, but ripping yeah. all and their land of me. If we're being honest, there's a reason that in real life, nations try to do that uh, when they're attacking smaller nations. And right. it's the same exact <laughs> reason that you should do it. In <laughs> but, but much like real life, sometimes you end up just eating an anti-tank It is indeed kind of possible <laughs> to right? fail an alpha strike and put yourself behind when you should be ahead of the <laughs> Just <laughs> like it is possible to do in real life. Oh, what war are you referencing there? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's more than one we could be actually, referencing. Actually, a I mean. bunch of... <laughs> one other thing, this isn't... Elfing exactly. One more. It's just a it's just a a quirk of the stealth mechanics. So a lot of these pseudo elf nations that aren't real elves, when they're they have stealth of their units is I think it's below fifty, but let's say forty or below to be safe. When I would say forty, I don't think anything has forty is the base stealth value. Well, when, in the game. when you have, so I don't think any non modded units. When, are would you have? Would you have troops of stealth? Stealth forty minus. You know, stealth fifth. I think the actual number is fifty minus, but I think it's let's say forty. Stealth forty, which a lot of units are. Yeah. Each unit on a commander will subtract one from that commander's stealth value. Um, oh, when, you're going to talk about the patrol. Right, when those units are less than 40. This is why you will almost never see stray PD catching elves, but you will sometimes see someone moving 40 Almish guys through, EA Almish guys through the land, and then they'll get caught by 10 patrol because that they have nugged their commander's stealth value down to a zero when it's rolling the stealth versus de-stealth roll, and that patrol value is rolling at like a one, so it's actually technically slightly advantaged to catch them. So... Yeah, yeah, it's like a coin flip at that. So... Yeah, so when you're using stealth parties as the attacker, you should not necessarily right. fill your fucking. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, so, man. so there's, there's two there's two things that that arise from that. If you are a one of those pseudo elf nations, those 
not technically an elf, but capable of stealth. We have a lot of guys of stealth 40. Uh, don't think that you can just infiltrate them all in an alpha strike the same way that elves can, because they are much, much, much more likely to get caught. Now, against potatoes, who only ever put 6 PD in all their provinces, you can, and don't patrol with anything, but against a lot of players, uh, you can't. Uh, so, you know... Be careful, be careful when you're doing that. And the other thing is, on the defender's end, you can use that to not get elved by people who aren't real elves. Uh, if you are defending, if you see, oh, I'm next to man, I'm next to, you know, uh, Shinyama, I'm next to early age Ulm. They have a bunch of guys with stealth values 40. Just crank that PD up to 10 in some of those provinces. Patrol with well, just a man. few guys right? You'll get a massively advantaged die roll, even patrolling with like 20, you know, 20 dudes plus 10 PD or whatever. And then you will be completely insulated from uh, that pseudo elfing that they could deliver. You will catch them much easier. And the same catastrophic consequences apply to them, though generally elves are more expensive. So you might not might not be as hilarious of a beating, but if you can just get that warning off of somebody waddling into 10 PD, that's that's huge. So that's just how you stop someone who is one of those pseudo wealth sort of kind of stealthy but not great at it guys from infiltrating in and then elfing you in one turn. Just Control with a few guys. Have have some PD above ten. Whatever. You should tell people that it does depend, though. So do have a vague idea of what units, if they're not like, if they're pseudo elves, have an idea of what units you'd be looking for if you're concerned, and right. make sure if you run into forty that your ten PD, even if it catches it with your dudes, actually wins and doesn't die. Well, a lot. Of <laughs> I don't. A lot of times I don't care if the 10 PD dies, right? Because then you already know the attack's coming, you know? It uh, does uh, its job yeah, as a tripwire. Getting a tripwire is not bad, but you, you could, uh, you, you still could lose in most of I guess that's fine if you, if you, if you're just going for the tripwire. Um, what am I trying to say? In conclusion? Uh, I don't know. Are we ready? No, for no, I'm just, like, like, it is a big investment if you are stealthing, so... Hitting a lot of provinces, uh, even as a pseudo elf, it does cost a bit of gold. A lot of people throw around the term efficiency and stuff. Sometimes <laughs> that's like, which is complete horseshit sometimes because they try to be more, the, the most efficient as they can, and then they only use finite resources and then they become very slow in actual right. terms. F False efficiency is another great podcast topic but <laughs> yeah you don't have to are, oh you have to be super efficient and taking any attrition in your first war will put you terribly be there's so much missing for like bro that you can't guarantee the first opponent you're gonna fucking slam into and if you don't then you're automatically lose the game it, there's so much bullshit that is <laughs> right online about this game like no it really well, just... i will also say you can lose half of your stuff in the first war but if you kill them in five turns, you're probably fine. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, like, it's okay not to have an efficient war. And I don't like this idea of, like, being, you have to be maximized efficient to play them. I mean, bro, people it's, make so many it, of mistakes in this it game. It's entirely yeah, possible to throw trying to do it, like, trying to get a minimum you need in order to take an efficient fight, and then you just underestimate what you need and you take a bad fight and suddenly oh. you trying to be more efficient made are, you less efficient. Are, are you criticizing my knife's edge plays, Ramsey? Knife edge Not just your you use <laughs> XP. Uh, I'm, sure everybody, I'm sure everybody who has played a lot of games of Dominions knows sometimes you don't bring enough mages to take somebody's cap in the first war. You just uh, don't commit enough and they have that. all Oops. of their mages there. And I think everybody's done it at least once. I've definitely done that is, a, that is a, another like a peanut in a blind storm. That is I, another key way to fucking grief yourself as a you're as not a new blind player. Storm. Or, or even as an experienced player is just oops, uh yeah, I just fucking underestimated the guy that I beat and put on his cap and then he gripped me and now I'm yeah, exactly. shit I lost all my shit that takes like eight turns to re replace. Like, <laughs> you, wait a second, if, this at high know, as fuck if, risk. If, if someone's on their cap, 
you don't need to hurry to kill them. They're not going yeah, to This pig? Oh, what's in here? You know, take a look. What the fuck are you doing in there, you rat? What the fuck are you doing in that hole? You know, you don't need to run in. Oh my god, the hole's open. I gotta run through and kill all my units. <laughs> Fuck off. Does does anyone... I think we covered Elfing pretty well. Uh, Does anyone have any concluding thoughts on Elfing? Uh, Absolutely use your stealth units. Initiate the raid game. Play the raid game. Uh, Don't get tilted. Talk to other people. Highly recommend going into Discord. Making some friends. Talk to them in voice. Doesn't matter if you're awkward. Throw yourself in voice and try to make friends. Uh, Might be bad few times but eventually you'll probably run into some of the sensible people in the community and maybe it'll work out uh there's only a few people i would say in the dominions community that are a little off their rocker but most of the people are pretty fun to talk to (laughs) To be fair some of the people think you're a little off your rocker so listen Listen, they don't even talk to me they can fuck off (laughs) this guy's an idiot any, any the last my face, cowards. Any... I would I would say uh, have fun with it. Don't be afraid to elf. Don't be afraid if you get elf. Put some thought into the turns and have fun. Yeah, I mean you're playing a game for fun and you don't get paid to play this fucking <laughs> Swedish fucking game. This only fucking only Lucid gets paid to play Dominions and he is making pennies on the hour. So. <laughs> oh yeah, he makes God. he he makes some. <laughs> <laughs> He just like if we started making money, we would make it. He is Lucid (laughs) Lucid and Drithel are the most profitable Dominions players, and they are making fucking. (laughs) Drithel reinvests it all into the bot too. That's that's the funny part. Uh, The the true most profitable. (laughs) No, the most profitable Dominions player is Perun, and it's not close. (laughs) <laughs> That's true. He doesn't, make, he doesn't make his money from Dominion. <laughs> he he makes it from make money because he doesn't make Dominion Listen, videos. Although build, he might make a, some when Dom Six a, comes out. Build a YouTube audience on Dominions and then pivot to real world politics. Yeah, <laughs> convince people that you, you know what you're talking about, but really, That's you say real... crystallize strategy makes <laughs> That's strategy. the real elf thing. Strategy crystallizes strategy. So... So on. I don't know. <laughs> oh so... my. It was so asinine every time I Listen, we it. said it in this podcast. We just didn't use those terms. We so, said, see what your opponent is doing and make your strategy around it. <laughs> he said it using the word strategy twice in three words. We didn't do that, but it's the same thing. So, uh, so, humans so, making mistakes? Never. So, uh... <laughs> just, to, just to cap off on, on, the, on the elfing things, uh, you know... If you are an attacker, maybe elfing is not as easy as you think it should be. You don't get to just wave your arms around, scream I'm an elf, take everyone's flags, and then, you know, instantly win against more advanced players. And on the defense, think about the actual situation instead of just, like, how bad it felt to lose all your land, because... Typically, uh, elfing is, while it's a hole, it's a defeat. It's like the equivalent of losing a medium-sized army. But it, it's not un, It's not something you can't dig yourself out of. And so just, uh, just with a few little tricks, you can uh, kind of start to get back in the game and uh, get back competing and uh, don't lose just because you got elf. Um, yeah, um, as it turns out, IRL morale is indeed, indeed OP this patch, and has been every patch. So this has been your All Stats No Res podcast, a little bit of a short episode. Friggin' decided not to show, so it was just uh, me, HP Munchcraft, Sauron, and Rob CA. I don't know what the next topic is. We don't know what the next topic is going to be, and we're not even sure when we're going to make the switch to dominion six or if we're even going to keep the same podcast name when we switch to dominion six but uh you can we're guarantee gonna, we're, we're, gonna we're gonna try to keep uh recording these uh through the transition and uh hopefully hopefully we'll have something intelligent to say about six when it comes out if you aren't aware i should pre-mentioned it if you aren't aware dominion six comes out on january the 17th 
This was recorded December the 27th, so maybe two or three episodes before uh, Dominion 6 drops. And uh, we'll see how long it takes for us to develop opinions about that game. <laughs> yeah, hopefully we don't spread We've misinformation. We've already developed opinions about that game, and they are woefully misinformed. <laughs> uh, I, I guarantee you any thoughts we will probably have will likely be incorrect, but we will... I'm, I'm going to wait for the game comes I'm out going to, to let our podcast <laughs> listeners in on a little secret here. We have already heard that man is OP. Oh my I god. Already. Have- and nobody who said that has even seen Man in the Game of Dominion. Hold, hold on. That's why I <laughs> wasn't saying once. it on the air, you fucking goon. <laughs> what the fuck? I didn't, I didn't I say who said it, it, HP. You're the one who gave it away. <laughs> he outed himself. He outed himself. <laughs> Listen, I have, I have secret back channel communications with several of the playtesters, and they are telling me very concerning things about middle-aged man. <laughs> you mean <laughs> the playtesters who have broadcast it in public channels? Cut, cut the feed! Cut the feed! <laughs>